I was in life-threatening situations. I could have got killed long before the music started. If you could go back in time and give young Curtis one piece of advice, what would it be? I would have started writing music way early. I wouldn't even, I'd have skipped all of the stuff that I could have possibly, because all of this could have changed. Well, I think that adjusts your character though, so it did turn into my behaviors in the music, the things you go through make you who you are. There's more ruthless people in the business world than in the street. You know, like they, they just have subtleties to their tactics. How they do things is it's more, you know, but they're doing it right in front of you. You know, how they're structuring the actual deal and things that they're doing. It's like just taking the money for you. Look, robbery, at least it will give, give you the courtesy of showing you the gun. So you can have those anxieties and feel those feelings that you would feel when you're being robbed. They'll do it on a piece of paper where you feel nothing and just rob you right there. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's, it's the same tactics with a different approach. And a lot of them, the, the people that do this comfortably, like handing you the contract, the, the thing that they're not conditioned for is direct conflict. And that the circumstances I grew under, I absolutely have to be prepared for. There's positive influences, there's negative influences, there's a lot of things around that you can actually do. Like, you look, look at YouTube, man. It's pretty much every skill set you're looking for, you can find on YouTube. you find some information about what you're trying to do and not even have it be something for you to sit and read. You wa you're watching them explain it to you. Mm. You know, so I don't know why you're not, it's not clearer that there's less limitations. Like, they're not limited the same way you were in the past, you know what I mean? Okay, now how did you become interested in vitamin water? I was in a supermarket and I saw a gallon of water for two eighty nine, and I went further down the aisle and I sent another gallon of spring water for fifty nine cent. And I, I just know that if you put that in these two different cups that we have in front of us, that I wouldn't know the difference between what spring it came from. When I got back, I told uh, Chris at the time, me and Chris Lighty was working closely together. He was managing me, and I said, uh, I want to sell water. And he was like, like what? <laughs> I said, I want to sell water. He's like, to who? Everybody need water. Like, you know, it, it might have been an easier concept for him if I said I wanted to sell liquor. So you bought the company? No, so I ended up having about almost 10% of it. And it was sold to Coca-Cola for 100, you made 100 million? Well, 4.1 billion, they actually sold the company for. I've somehow ended up in the circumstances where I've been up against the toughest things in the environment that I come out of before any success takes mm -hmm. place. I, I always say if there was someone someone to run and go get, I would have ran and got them, but I have to run and get me. So I had to come back myself every time. So it just makes me not look at what would be the great, the, the bigger situations in front of me, the harder circumstances don't seem so rough to me no more. You know, like, cause I've already been up against the toughest things. Mm -hmm the biggest obstacles. Take this for granted, right? Almost 90% of the time, I'm uh, communicating with people who've achieved a higher level of education than me, right? They're college graduates, things like that. And um, what I hold on to is they wouldn't have made it under the circumstances that I came up under. And, you know, if the information that you needed in the business classes were uh, in the book, if everything you needed was in the book, then the teacher would be too successful to teach the class. It's, it's how you adjust to things too, I think, when, because you're gonna have peaks and valleys or have things change in your career at, the, at a point and you feel like, is it at a high or is it at a low? You, don't, you can't even, because the money is still coming in. You don't feel like there's a, a change in, in, in finances, stuff like that. but you'll see things that you go, wait, I don't understand why they're doing this. Even now in film and television, I look around and go, wait, what's, what is this? Like, I don't know what they're doing. Like, why'd they pick this up? Mm -hmm. if, if, if I don't understand what's going on, then I'm not sure I'm as good as I think I am, right? If, you, if you're confused at how the operation is, is working, then you don't know. If, if everything I pick is working, you feel great about that, but you go, what, what is all the other stuff that they're picking? Right. What is that? Like, how much does that equate to as far as the audience that they have at the network or why, why are they doing it? You know, and just trying to understand that. Because um, I guess eventually I'll be the network. Without knowing who you are, individuals could look and just judge you 
and said, I don't like that. He had that diamond goat mm -hmm. on his neck. Why did he put that there? He got to be a certain kind of person because he had, he liked diamonds. Mm -hmm. All right? And then they could just assume that you, anything they would like to register negative, they can just register it negative. Some people, they have the, uh, the trait of, like, let's say the person's across the street, they look at you, they don't like you across the street. Some people feel the need to go across the street to say, why I'm a good person. I don't give a f Yeah. I genuinely don't give a f about how those people care about me across the street because they don't care about me. Having a, the ability to focus on something or to work on it will allow you to work hard enough to be good enough at it. That's one thing when you can actually commit to yourself and what you want for your life and you work that hard at it. This is watching someone else raise their hand to answer a question that they know the answer to. And that means that person deserves to be ahead of you in life because your fear of being wrong at that point is not allowing you to create your value in the workspace. Well, when you're in life-threatening situations, it makes you a little more conscious of that. You know, and the more that you are aware of your fate, the higher the probability you have a chance to live. So you're a little more free. So walking into a room, even at the worst possible uh, scenario, it won't damage me to the point or hurt as much as that hurt it. So I go in there in a secure space, able to speak and ask the questions. And I'd rather be, feel like I'm unaware for the moment within that, those quarters than to feel like I'm unaware in a losing situation. So I don't regret those things. I don't regret them because I don't think I'd be who I am today if I wasn't exposed to those situations. If you ask me what I, uh, those are unfortunate situations that I've had to experience. And if I had a choice, I would have definitely went in a different direction. But under those circumstances, when, when you're in an environment where you meet aggression with aggression or you're deemed weak and the weak becomes the prey, you had to kind of back people off of you at different points. And when you're willing to go as far as further than the other guy, you, you always prevail. You always end up on top. Even at this point, the person that you could have met fell in love with, how many positive moments? Right. Your highlight reel. Like, the, the things are really important. The most expensive thing we spend is time. Because mm. we can't get it back. Mm. And, and when you look at the highlight reel, whether the person's rich, poor, in the middle, wherever they're at, right? Look, me personally, I look at it and say, they still have so many moments. Look, before I had money, when I'm rich in the middle, when I'm poor, when I'm in the middle, when I'm rich, regardless, I've been on each one of those portions of the journey. Right. I had fun. When we didn't have no money, we had fun. Was that the most fun? It was fun. Now, it's, it's, a, it's a different kind <laughs> a different of fun. different kind of fun, yeah, for sure. Different kind of fun, and the when you grow up without finances, the, uh, you, you start to view financial freedom becomes really important. You know, you start to right. be conscious of what you, because the restraints, the biggest restraint is something that costs. Right. The, the, the how much it costs, right. you know what I mean? And later you, you work yourself into a place where you're not worrying about the cost. Like when you're saying, it's elementary, right? The building blocks that you put down, essentially if they keep moving, you can't build, right? So. I, put, I set certain rules that was the basis for how we would be productive. I said, I don't care who you fight, do not fight someone that I came with. Mm. If you niggas have some sort of dispute or something going on, y'all tell each other, I with you right now, get away from me. Right. You go to the back of the bus, you stay at the front of the bus, whatever. You right. know you're upset, you know you're uptight, but you just stay away from me. Y'all stay away from each other. Right? Because if y'all have the fight, Y'all both getting the f out of here. Y'all going home. Right. And the reason why I was saying this is I can't bring new people on when the foundation that I had is fighting right. each other. 